Hello everybody, I am Fumin Show, and today we're going to be talking about Made in Abyss Season 2, Episode 11, Value. So everything is kind of falling apart right now uh, for Fapida in this episode. We see basically everything that she's been fighting for, her, her desire, her goal... Her quest for vengeance sort of be stripped away here in this week's episode. We see it sort of pulled away uh, quite violently, to be honest. This episode was one of the more violent episodes in terms of, like, the the gore and that shock value, you know? Um, I liked this episode a lot. I, I do think it was a great episode. It was a necessary episode uh, for sort of setting up the finale and what's sort of happening there. I don't know where we go from here, to be honest with you. And I do feel like... Wazu Kian, I, I, I feel like I, I don't know what Wazu Kian is up to fully. Uh, him taking Vueko down into the pits, basically. Uh, I, I'm really curious. I'm curious what's happening there. So as I mentioned, this episode is super gory. It is super bloody, super violent, and kind of a Sakuga showpiece a little bit. Uh, this gore and this, this, again, shock value thing that is happening in this episode uh, definitely has some tremendous animation attached to it uh there are some stellar stellar shots uh w one of my favorite parts of the entire episode is when nanachi comes in uh with the fishing reel and with bailoff there what an excellent shot man what, what it just an incredible shot it's like the first time nanachi's had this sort of moment in the series like i'm here you know it's like that kind of moment and i i just oh it was so good i love nanachi's like new helmet thing that's really cool uh, we haven't seen her use this, like, uh, Gone Freak's fishing reel thing. We haven't really seen that before. Maybe, what? We see, we've seen her go fishing, I think. I think we've seen that in, like, Season 1, if I recall correctly. Uh, but it was just really, really cool. And Bailoff coming in. I had an audible reaction to that. I was like, holy shit, Bailoff! I knew you were coming! I knew you something was going to happen. Uh, and something does happen. He essentially does what he did for Nanachi and just reveals all of these memories uh, through scent and I, I'm not really quite sure how it happens to be honest but she enters Bailoff and it's sort of like an explosion of memories of Irem Yui, of Vueko, Wazu Kian, all of the past settlers and it kind of breaks her a little bit. She sees what everyone went through and I think she slowly starts realizing that this this Haku, this thing that she's been in search for, uh, is sort of not necessarily the case. There's a lot left to be uh, interpreted, to be honest with you, in terms of what her mindset is, what uh, Fapira's mindset is in this episode. Uh, because by the end, we see that she has some sort of resolve and also some sort of uh, eye situation going on i'm not really sure what that is uh we've seen this before this is uh what reg has in his helmet um i don't know did she become a doll did she become uh, an abed is that is that what's happening uh i have no clue i literally have no clue i think we might be getting into like the origins of life in terms of like how i don't know i i'm starting to think that like you know this series is called made in abyss and i've always assumed because rico was born in the abyss and and had to be brought up or whatever but yeah i think it really means reg was made in abyss and i think we're, we're gonna start seeing how more natural life can be formed within the abyss th due to the curse and and blessings and things of that sort i'm not quite sure again that's theory crafting and, and again kind of on the nose but I, I don't know what's happening by the end of this episode i don't know what that is sort of the opening shot of this episode of her entering the village while holding reg was really really powerful this episode was kind of chocked full of those moments, you know, just those powerful moments. Seeing uh, Nanachi standing with Bailoff with the new helmet on, like, that's a really cool shot, man. That's a shonen shot. That's like, you're flipping the page. I could see that manga panel in my head, and I can, like, feel that feeling, you know, with that shot. Uh, and again, oh my goodness, the Sakuga in this episode, the animation... When she's just fighting all of these different beasts uh, that are now entering the village because there's no shield anymore. There's nothing to prevent them. Uh, the barrier is gone. So we just have wild creatures entering the village, including the turbinate dragon. 
uh, that weird snake creature thing that I believe we saw in the second episode of the series, of the season, excuse me. And uh, it's really cool that things are kind of like a full circle situation. Like, it's really cool that they were bringing this thing back up. He's kind of had, uh, it's had appearances uh, throughout the season, but it's really cool to kind of get that at this final uh, stage in, in this overall arc right now. Uh, it definitely feels like sort of a full circle moment and we get to see what its power truly is. Like this thing is, it's a fucking monster, dude. So yeah, we see Fapita fight all of these creatures. She gets swallowed and then eaten and then spit out and then torn apart. And then she eats villagers to regain her strength. And we see that now she's in a different form again with the eye. There's just like a sort of, it's almost like the hero's journey situation i don't know if anyone watching this is familiar with the hero's journey but it really does feel that way even though i don't consider Fapita much of a hero but it definitely like i can see the writing in this episode i could see uh the the steps to create a, an excellent character the steps to kind of uh form this new character that has more animosity and is and has more resolve and is able to uh kill Wazukian, I guess. I'm not 100% sure what her goal is now and, and what exactly is going to happen next, but I definitely, I'm able to see the beats here. And I, I'm trying to figure out whether or not that's a good or bad thing. I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, is that okay for the series to do? Uh, this is the first time I think these uh, story beats were so obvious and so uh, on the forefront, you know, like I'm, I'm able to like literally see the writing steps, you know, like this is, basics in storytelling in terms of how you develop a character and i'm really curious like is that okay am i just noticing that is that something that like i'm i'm just seeing because i've like studied you know the hero's journey and I, i've written some things like this uh and I, I, i'm not trying to like toot my own horn here or whatever but like i, I again i i have uh experience this in my own form of writing and it's uh, it's very interesting to look at once when you read the hero's journey uh, it definitely, you see it, you see it in like everything you watch basically. Uh, and this especially, uh, was the first time I've really like felt that where I was like, holy shit, like this is absolutely the hero's journey. There's a lot of other variables at play here for sure. And it does feel absolutely original. There's not like, oh, this is unoriginal. This ain't right. It's just like very story focused. It's, this episode was very focused on progression of Fapida as a character. And I, I do think that is okay. I, that's a necessary thing, like I mentioned. Uh, but maybe it could have been done a little better. There's a lot of, like, still shots in this episode, like, of the memories. We'll just see, like, still shots. There were even some, like, when Nanachi was being revealed, there was, like, some still... There was some interesting editing and interesting uh, formulation of scenes in this episode that I'm, I might not have chosen. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I would have done that. I think it does kind of take you out of the episode just a little bit. Uh, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, this, this is a good episode and it is a necessary episode. And I definitely felt the feels like I am sad. Bailoff is gone now. Like that, that definitely hurts. Uh, I love Nanachi's realization of what exactly is happening here. I, I love that stuff where she's able to just kind of deduce the whole situation. Like, oh, Wazukian wants this to happen. She wants you know, Fapida to kill Rico and that way, or at least have her on the brink of death and then feel remorse for that. And like, it's like, she's able to sort of see like the mind's eye of Wazu Kian there. And uh, yeah, I guess that is the goal. I just don't know how Wazu Kian achieves that. Cause he mentions that his body is like on the brink of destruction. Like he's, he's, he's done. So he wraps her up of uh, Waco and falls into this pit. Um, I'm sure he'll be going on his own journey. Uh, in next, not I guess not next week's episode. They're taking a break, I think, or or something. I'm not quite sure. But next episode, I think we might definitely get a glimpse of the the last episode. I feel like everything sort of has to come full circle now, doesn't it? But yeah, this episode was really, really good. Uh, again, moments of of terror and just sheer like holy shit. You know, I had a few of those moments for sure, uh, and also some of the shots were excellent, uh, poster worthy, that kind of deal. Uh, but I do think this episode was like one of the slower episodes, weirdly, and I do think it, it definitely, I, I think it was just like structured a little weird. Some things felt a little out of place here and there in terms of like the editing, not in terms of like actual like long form storytelling, but more so like 
how these things were sort of put together. I could see the seams, uh, at, at, you know, and that, I don't think that's always a good thing. I think it's okay to, like, realize that, like, hey, this is this type of story. It's following these beats. That's perfectly fine. But when you, like, see the seams between scenes... I think things can get a little like, hey, that's that's noticeable, and I don't think that's a good thing. Again, I don't want it to come across as me hating on this episode. This episode was really, really good. Don't get me wrong. There was great animation, great moments, and I, I definitely feel the weight of this entire season sort of pitted on this episode. I definitely feel, uh, ah, uh, dude, there's so much going on, and and like theories at this point. Like, I can't even craft them. I can't even, like, surmise what exactly is going to happen next. Like, does does Reg have a place in the finale? I'm sure he does. But, like, what is his place in the finale? What is his goal now? He could not defeat Fapida. He hesitated. He is scared right now uh, to eliminate that thing. That thing that he once truly, truly cared about. And he feels that love. He feels that care. We see it, uh, you know, we saw it last week's episode. And we see it uh, in this week's episode as well. And... I don't know where his place in the story is right now. And same as Rico as well. We see Rico sort of like really tired in this episode and really like just fatigued and like about to pass out. I wonder if like Prushka like drains her in some way when she does blow the whistle. I wonder if like that takes some of her her being in some way. I'm curious what's going on there or is she just like just very tired and this is a lot to bear right now. I'm, I'm curious. I don't know if that's like an intentional thing or like no she's just going through a lot right now i'm not quite sure there but i don't know where i don't know we have all the pieces set i feel like this episode just kind of set every everything up and now it's time to like watch the play you know now it's time to watch everything come together uh in this hour-long finale and i'm very very excited about it i i truly am i think this season has set up for something i, I i'm so curious i think everything is sort of riding on the finale of this arc I, I i truly feel that way like there are episode like episode four is riding on the finale like there are moments in this season that i hope sort of come together correctly you know there's there's definitely some no pressure you know like there, there's definitely some pressure but uh and i, I don't want to like create that kind of energy going into uh the last episode but i would be lying if i said i wasn't a little anxious and like uh, definitely excited and hyped but like just a little like oh man how are they gonna end this like what is what is the end to this you know how is it all going to come into play and um, it, I, it's just it's fun it's been a fun time it's been a fun ride talking about this series comment down below and give me your thoughts on this week's episode of made in abyss do you have a similar feeling on how you kind of see the story beats and the characters development like literally like we're resting in a cave in this episode that that happens in this episode uh, in terms of the hero's journey. Uh, I'm curious what you guys thought about that. Am I being overly critical? And again, I don't want it to come out as like, when something is so good, you know, I kind of, these reviews, I kind of put it under the microscope. You know, I'm, I'm being over analytical. That's sort of the point of these reviews and things of that sort. Like that's, that's what I do. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, what did, what did you think of this episode? Did you like it? Did it adapt the manga in a way that feels satisfactory? Uh, comment below and uh, let me know. And thank you so very much for making me a part of your day and watching this video. It truly means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, as always, party on.